Okay, JJ, he has FP like crazy. On May 20th, 2009, okay, watch while I'm the world on. realized that America was rigged. Six seconds? Yeah, 50 seconds. was the name of the infamous voting scandal led by employees at AT&T who created power techs from demo phones that allowed individuals to vote for contestant Chris Allen up to 10,000 times. While Chris Allen was a very talented singer, it was obvious throughout the whole season that Adam Lambert, the runner-up, was crushing the competition. Not once throughout the entire season did the judges criticize his singing, since it was near perfect. Some even suggest that his performance of Mad World is the best in American Idol history. But when Adam lost in the finale to Chris, Wait. it started to raise suspicion. But what was uncovered Wait. would lead to American Idol's demise. Wait, hold up. Uh, wait, I just want to see it. I want to see it. I want to see it. I want to see it. One out spaces, one out places. That that is okay. This is bad. I'm sorry. That's just bad. Places going nowhere. Find it kind of funny. I find it kind of sad. I hate covers that do that. Like they they just try so hard. I fucking hate that shit. Viewership dropping by the millions and fans losing trust in the brand forever. How can you be certain the competition results are fair when AT&T admitted there was a manipulation in the votes? Despite Chris Allen winning, Adam Lambert would go on to have a much more successful music career, as he has now earned the honor of replacing Freddie Mercury as the new frontman of Queen, the fifth highest selling band of all time. But we probably should have seen Textgate coming because a few years earlier the votes were manipulated to purposely get a bad singer further along in the competition. That's content, but before then. we get into the next scandal, allow me to introduce Scentbird. Bird's got my back. Scentbird. Bird. It's just a little over $7 for your bird for sponsoring this video. Controversial American Idol contestants in history. Sanjaya was a 17 year old kid from Seattle that had a loving personality and a decent voice. Oh, I can't blame you, but I just keep trying. That. Most of you might be thinking his singing isn't that bad, and it really isn't, especially compared to the industry standard today. But for American Idol, a show dedicated to discovering the best talent the country has to offer, you, people I'm thought he didn't even come close. And the fact that he made it all the way to the top seven finalists indicated that there was something suspicious going on. A website called Vote for the Worst was created in the early 2000s and gained a lot of popularity during season three of American Idol. It was essentially a blog or forum dedicated to mobilizing Idol fans to vote for the worst person every week, with the ultimate goal of the winner being a mediocre or bad singer. Their first target was Antonella Barba. The it went as far as leaking racy photos of her to bring traffic to the site. A low blow for sure. However, she ended up getting voted off, so their troll campaign was no longer successful. And in 2019, she got sentenced to 45 months in federal prison for possessing 400 grams of fentanyl with the intent to distribute it. She what even tried to reduce fuck? her sentence in court with the argument that being voted off American Idol was the reason she spiraled out of control. Anyways, after being unsuccessful with Antonella, Sanjaya became the fan favorite, or I guess the least favorite, because he was often the person they were voting for as the worst. Simon Cowell was notoriously not a fan of Sanjaya, but the general American public thought he was sweet and lovable. They even made iconic memes about Sanjaya. The controversy shit, around him turned his supporters into diehard fans and turned his ops into massive haters. Make sure you're drinking water. Howard Stern even praised the Vote for the Worst website, which brought it to much bigger heights. Shock jock Howard Stern is plugging a website called VoteForTheWorst.com, hyping Sanjaya as a way of discrediting American Idol. Then just Idol. stop doing the that. The was getting around 4 to 5 million viewers each week, earning Holy them some shit. coverage. Has a website, and uh, they're, Wait, they're voting for the worst insane. contestant on American Idol. That's how they're doing that's right. At the time, now, these numbers no are crazy. There's no proof that this website was manipulating votes, but the massive amount of traffic the site was getting each week could suggest that they had some influence. Even the creator of the website, Dave Della Terza, was interviewed on national news. Uh, I don't know that we're trying to rig the process, but what we're trying to do is say, you know, this isn't a legitimate talent competition. Of course it's not. We're trying to make good reality TV, so why don't we try to keep around someone that's bad and try to keep them around, help them win, because it'll make the show uh, better to watch. Now Dave raises the age-old question, that's not wrong, do huh? your votes matter? The only evidence people use is when a contestant seems to be popular on the internet and in the news, but then gets voted off, or when a contestant is generally disliked, but advances, which obviously isn't a strong argument. 6 9 has 9 million monthly listeners on Spotify. 
but everyone hates him. Clearly, not everyone hates him, because a lot of people are still listening to his music. My point is that the general public perception has little to do with the actual American Idol voting data, especially yeah. when they don't even show what the real data is. There is no live tracker, there is no formal voting report that is released. You just have to trust that they are doing the right thing, and the person with the least it's votes true. is the one who gets eliminated. Plus, you have to consider that plenty of the artists that lost would go on to be wildly successful. Chris Daughtry finished fourth in 2006 and would go on to sell 21 million records. Tori Kelly didn't even make it past the second round and went four times platinum later. Oh, wow. Lauren Elena was runner up in 2011 and went 11 times platinum. In Holy fact, shit. out of the top 10 most successful American Idol contestants, six of them didn't even win the competition. However, there's another way to analyze- There's good there's good on that. Sometimes you don't win the battle, but you win the war. All you have to do is keep fighting it this that may prove the votes are actually Real. choosing the winner, Real but the true. people voting might be the problem. The WGWG controversy stands for White Guy with Guitar. From 2007 to 2012, the winner of American Idol was a white guy with a basic white guy image who loved to play the guitar. A darker theory suggests the show is racist and is promoting an agenda, but the viewership was declining by the millions year after year during the WGWG era. It doesn't seem likely that the producers and investors would keep the agenda going if it was hurting the show's reach. It's especially considering that the first six winners of American Idol were unpredictable, diverse, and led to the show growing in viewership pregnant. every year. Season 7 was the first WGWG winner, which was the first time they ever saw viewership decline, and it steadily kept dropping from there. Ken Warwick, producer of the show, Warwick explained Ken. the That's reason. It's no secret that most reality shows are female-driven, either by moms or by young girls. It does mean we're going to get a heftier amount of female votes. Obviously, we are very much aware that the voting can be skewed towards the boys. But it's not just because of their gender, but their personality and potentially their looks. You have this alliance between young girls and grandmas, mostly. and they see it not necessarily as a contest to create a pop star competing on the contemporary radio, but as who's the nicest guy in a popularity contest. In short, the winners are disproportionately chosen by suburban moms and young girls because they like the show the most. The predictability of the winner may have led to a huge average viewership drop from 25 million in season 10 to 18 million in season 11. But after the five year WGWG streak, Candace Glover would go on to win season 12 of American Idol. However, the viewership dropped again from that 18 million average to 15 million. And it Sometimes just they just run their course. Keep in mind. Chat, can I be that chat? You guys, you guys, if you look at this graph, right? Look at the graph, right? What is the first thing that, 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 that comes to mind? Um, Master Chef, I feel like. I feel like after, like, what is it, like, five seasons, four seasons? Kind of the same thing, I think. Happened. And I think it's the same thing for, like, a lot of other shows, too. I feel like it's for, like, a lot of shows, too, though. No? Like, the novelty. The, and then, at some point, it's like, it seems that they, they change the nature of the show. Because they have, they're at some certain heights, they get maybe, maybe sponsors, maybe they get um, business opportunities, and it seems like the nature of the show changes based on the choices that they make from the height that they've gained. And, and then the show disintegrates. Dis 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 Two fifteen million, and it just sense? kept going down. Keep in mind, this was also in 2013, where the social media takeover like was about to destroy TV ratings entirely. What did I say you? Like, I don't do any sponsors. I, I, there's literally no sponsors in this stream at all. There's like zero. It's likely that the voting process falls somewhere in the middle. Millions of people choose who they want, hey, baby, the show producers use the votes to determine who recently, the most popular singers are, the advance those people at the top, then eliminate one from the bottom few based on what will make for the most entertaining outcome. All voting shows like American Idol, The X Factor, The Voice, So You Think You Can Dance usually have the same overarching issue. It's not necessarily about talent, but producing the most entertaining show. Yep. However, this is about as close to the real world as it gets. How often do the most talented people become the most successful? The most talented singers, actors, nope. hell, even government yeah, nope. officials are not always the ones who it's about creating substance always. become the most successful. Talent is definitely important, but branding, relatability, and overall entertainment value is what people are drawn to the most. The chances of American Idol being just another scripted reality TV show where the votes don't count and producers pick the winner are very high. And maybe the decline in viewership was simply due to the death of TV and birth of social media. In the end, the viewers get to discover their new favorite singer. Winning the competition does get you an Interesting. immediate prize, I but the platform and exposure is the most valuable part. And what you do with that exposure is on you. I on Chat, I want to do squad games today of all games, of all days, right? 